Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me again as we continue the theme we began Monday, the, you know, right on the heels of the 4th of July, talking about justice. You know, we say we say as part of our creed with liberty and justice for all. Well, what is justice? And do we really have Oh, have we ever had justice for everybody? And what does justice look like from God's perspective? We've been looking at Mark chapter 14 because it's 48 hours left in Jesus's life and he's at a dinner party. And Mary, out of gratitude for what Jesus had done in raising her brother Lazarus from the dead, has poured some precious perfume on Jesus's head. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas, old Judas, uh, has criticized her for this act of love because it was it was expensive, extravagant. And he said, you know what, girl, you could have sold that perfume and we could have got the proceeds and given it to the poor, given it to the poor. And Jesus said, Judas, leave her alone. The poor you will have with you always. And Jesus is quoting from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 15. Deuteronomy chapter 15 says this, verse four says there will, verse four, excuse me, verse four says, there should be no poor among you. So God doesn't want poverty. Talk about the will of God. You hear these preachers talking about the will of God. God doesn't want poverty and gives us what we must do to eliminate it. For the Lord your God, will greatly bless you in the land he has given you as a special possession. You will receive this blessing if you are careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. So God says, I don't, you should have no poverty among you. But notice in verse 11, there is poverty. And here's the reason why. Verse 11 says, you will always have some of the land who are poor. That is why I am commanding you to share freely. And that's because of hoarding on the part of the wealthy, the rich, the affluent, not sharing, bottlenecking the blessings that come from God and not letting it filter down uh, opportunities to other people. And Jesus is going to quote Deuteronomy uh, where Jesus where Jesus said, "You, um, God, the Moses said, you'll have the poor with you always. Jesus will pull from that and say to Judas, the poor you will have the, with you always, Mark chapter 14, verse 7. Now, guess what many people have done? They have misappropriated the scripture, and they have made it to mean that God wills poverty. God does not will poverty. What God is saying, Jesus is saying is, look, I'll be dead in 48 hours. The, the work of helping the poor, look, you'll have that once I'm after my crucifixion, after my resurrection. What it basically is saying is this, is that first things should always be first. In 48 hours, Jesus would be dead. If you're going to do something for Jesus, the time to do it is right now. There's a sense of urgency. And I think Mary recognized that. Mary wanted to help the poor, but she also recognized, look, I've got to do something while I have a chance, I have to do it for Jesus. The one, Some of the worst religion you can ever have, in fact, it might be the worst religion, and that is meant to religion. Well, somebody needed to somebody needed to know that you cared about them and loved them before they passed off the scene and you meant to do it, but you didn't do it. Um, somebody um, needed to hear from you in a time of crisis and you meant to do it, but you did not do it. Mental religion does not comfort a heart. It does not dry a tear-stained eye. It does not encourage a troubled mind meant to. It's only when you actually do something. Once you get the impulse to act in a loving way towards somebody, don't put it off. Had she said, okay, I'm going to put this thing off for a week, then she would have missed her opportunity. She went, found that vase of precious perfume. She broke it and poured it out on Jesus. And when she broke it, she released something beautiful that blessed Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful metaphor? She took the vase, broke it, and when it was broken, something released, something beautiful was released, the perfume. 
What happens if we take pride and we break it? What happened if we could take our arrogance and break it? What happened if we could take our need to be in control and break it? What would happen if we took racism and broke it? If we could break these isms, sexism, racism, controlism, ageism, all these isms, if we could break it, like she broke the precious vase of perfume, we could break it. Maybe we could release something beautiful, something called justice into our world. She was criticized for what she did. And listen, anytime you do something of significance, you will always be criticized. It don't take much size to criticize. But don't let your critics stop you from doing beautiful things. You continue to be do the beautiful things. And Jesus spoke up and said to Judas, leave her alone. And when you do beautiful things and you're criticized and your heart and motivation is right, God will step in. God will offend you and say, leave her alone leave him alone. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. I ask the Lord that you would bless your people, deliver us from mental religion. If there's something that we need to do that is urgent, get in shape, uh, lose weight, go back to school, write the letter, make the phone call, whatever it is we need to do, don't let us postpone. Don't let us procrastinate. Let us do it right now. Deliver us from mental religion. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for being with me with another powerful point to ponder. And look, everyone needs a church home. If you don't have one, I want to invite you to contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, uh, ssclive.org, or New Start. Don't forget that, New Start at ssclive.org. Look, we'll get back with you. We will get back with you. Make the contact, okay? So you be blessed. Have a great day. We'll pick up on this tomorrow. Look, we'll have Bible study tonight, churches tonight, worship night. Uh, the pre-worship experience begins at 630. And then we'll have Bible study, Bible study at seven o'clock. All right. All right. You come and join us. You'll be blessed. All right. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19 to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. I'll see you tonight in Bible study. Take care.